Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some tools that you may need when working with configurations. I'll be using those tools throughout the series, so I highly recommend that you install those so you can follow along. In addition to that, we'll go over how can we manage Sysmon configurations via the command line. How can we configure Sysmon using the command line? And some of the gotchas uh, and stuff that we need to be aware of when we're working with Sysmon. So let's get started with some of those tools. So my first recommendation is to install the Sysmon Visual Studio Code extension. This is an extension that I actually wrote myself and I've been maintaining now for, I would say around two years. This extension will provide you several snippets that you can actually use when working with Sysmon because as we're working with the XML configuration files, one of the things that you'll notice is that they need to be case sensitive and they need to be in a specific structure. So this extension will actually allow us to work with those configuration files and will help us to be less error prone as we're writing our configurations. In addition to that, one of my other recommendations is to install the PS Gumshoe PowerShell module. It's a module that I wrote specifically with a couple of friends from the industry to work with event log files to be able to also aid in threat hunting and I think that you guys are going to find this module quite useful. The way that we install this module is that we use the install module command. And we just give the name of the module PowerShell Gumshoe. And what it's going to do is going to go into the PowerShell gallery and it's going to download the latest version of the module itself and make it available for you to run a series of commands. Now we're going to start looking into the different command line switches that we can use for managing configuration of Sysmon. So let's go over to the console. If I want to list the configuration that I currently have uh, applied to Sysmon on this system, I just simply run Sysmon C for configuration and it will show me the configuration. Some of the stuff that we're going to see, if we have any rules, we're going to see those. What is the specific schema for that rule, that, that configuration that was actually applied to the system? We can see other parameters, including the location of the configuration file. Now, if I want to reset this configuration to its default, the way I would do that is sysmon minus C, then dash dash. And that is updating the configuration to use all defaults. If we list that configuration again, we're going to see now that the configuration is back to its default set. So we have SHA-256, we have CRL checking, we have DNS lookups enabled, and process creation, process termination, and all of the others are already given as default for Sysmon itself. Another thing that we're going to notice is that the configuration file is set to users administrators default. Now, every time we do a change, we're going to have an event 16 inside of the Sysmon event log. A good way of using PS Gumshoe to get those events is get Sysmon config change. I'm going to pipe this to more. And we're going to see here the event for the configuration. We only have one, and we can see that it's set to defaults. Now let's look at the multiple parameters that we have available to us. And we can look at those in the schema, as I mentioned in the previous video, when we were talking about installation of Sysmon. So when we look here and we look at the configuration section, we have multiple parameters that we can actually use. Some of them are switches, other ones are name parameters. That means that those parameters need to be under the Sysmon element inside of the XML file. Now, here comes one of my pet peeves with Sysmon. Some of these parameters have been deprecated and no longer work, but they're still included inside of the schema and inside of the help information. So let's go over some of them. We have the minus G for pipe monitoring. We have minus H so we can specify hashing algorithms. 
we have the minus L for image loading, we have minus N for network connections, and we have minus R to check revocation. So when we're working with all of these switches to apply a configuration change to the system, we need to make sure that we specify minus C. Minus C means that Sysmon is going to be in configuration mode. Let's start with using the minus H to change the hashing algorithms used. Sysmon minus C, minus H. And if I give it an asterisk, it's actually going to set the system to monitor for all hashing algorithms. And we can see that we're logging SHA-1, MD5, SHA-256, and import hash. All of them are going to be in a single string inside of the event log as new processes get created. For example, if right now I hit notepad.exe, and I just simply go and pull with psgum to the newly created events, It's this mom process create event. Let's stop this. Let me pipe it in some more. And here we have notepad.exe. And when we look at the hashing algorithms, now as I mentioned, one of the things that we're going to be seeing is that all of the hashing algorithms are going to be in a single line. If we look here, I'm able to capture image load, network connections, and also have check for revocation to check if the signature of drivers that are getting loaded have been revoked or not. We also have pipe monitoring. So let's configure those. The way that it works is that we specify the image name. The image is going to be the name of the executable that would generate those events. And this is just useful for troubleshooting. Let's say that I'm working with a malicious binary and want to capture all of the DLLs that that binary is actually loading. One of the ways I can do that is I can do sysmon minus C, and then I can specify minus L for load, and then I can just put malicious.exe for the name of the executable that I want to monitor for. No matter where that executable is in the system, as long as its name is malicious.exe, it's going to be captured. Configuration has been updated. Now, if I just do minus C, I'm able to list the configuration. And we see that we have a rule with a filter of image where the value is going to be malicious.exe. So now let's look for more stuff for malicious.exe. Let's say if I want to go for network connections. One of the things I can do is I can do sysmon minus C. I can do minus N for network connections. And then I go malicious.exe. And then I list my configuration. One of the things that you'll notice, it's not additive. So it didn't add to my current configuration. It actually replaced my configuration. Here we can see that the command line that was used for configuring sysmon is now included as the configuration file. Same thing for event 16. So if I do get sysmon config change, select the first one, we're going to see that under configuration, inside of that event that was generated, we have that line there also for us. So we can track if somebody's doing any changes to Sysmon, what was the command line that was actually used. Now we're going to go into one of the caveats. Sysmon, sometimes with new releases, features are going to be deprecated. And sadly, like any other software programming process, there's going to be bugs. That's why I'm always constantly mentioning to you to test. Probably you noticed that I've been skipping the process access command line switch. And the main reason for that is that that command line switch worked all the way until Sysmon 12. 
Then on version 13 and 14, that command line switch no longer works. So I cannot specify an image for it to capture. I do not know if it was deprecated because it's not included in notes when they include deprecations. In addition to that, I don't know if it is a bug. Uh, sadly, that's something that I actually found via testing that I need to reach out to Microsoft and see, hey guys, and I'll do that through their forums. I'll do that via Twitter. There's not a, as I mentioned, it's a free tool. There's no support. So it's, I cannot open a support ticket. I need to reach out to the developers or to Mark Rustinovich himself to see, hey, this is not working anymore. Why is it not working? And see if they can fix that. So if we look at the scheme itself, and I do sysmon minus s, I'll pipe this into more again. We're going to see process access minus K. So let's try that. Let's do sysmon minus C minus K. And I want to track anybody trying to get a hold of all permissions on LSAS.exe. It says that the configuration was updated, but if I do sysmon minus C, I see that there's no rules and there's no entry for it. So let's give it a test. Let me open task manager. Let me look for LSAS on this system. Let me do a memory dump. Activity that an attacker would actually take. Now I'm going to do get sysmon. I'm going to do process access. And we can see that no events. So it's not a silent rule. In version 12 and before, one of the things that we would have, would have noticed is an entry here for process access, then the name of the image, colon, and then that it was looking for somebody trying to obtain all permissions on that image. Sadly, it is not there. So that is one of the reasons that I'm constantly telling you, hey, test, validate. With every new version of Sysma, have a process established where you're validating the different rules and the different configuration parameters and ensure that stuff is getting logged. Now, this doesn't apply only to Sysma. Now, this not only applies to Sysma. This applies to any security product that you may have deployed inside of your environment. Have a process. There are multiple attack emulation frameworks out there that you can actually use and leverage to emulate several of the attacks and validate those top rules for which you do not have coverage inside of your EDR product or AV product, and you decided to cover those with Sysmon. Again, I hope that you found this video useful and that you like the content. Remember, like and subscribe.